Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break with Helen Toxopius. She is a postdoctoral researcher at the Utrecht School of Economics and Sustainable Finance Lab. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with unique insights from the world of academia and higher education. In this series, we have conversations with team members of the Naturevation Project, funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 programme. Coffee Break with Researchers makes scientific knowledge accessible to all. Helen, thank you very much for accepting this invitation to have a coffee break with me. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, and thank you for inviting me. Today, as usual, I'm having a black coffee uh, from Costa Rica, I guess. Which coffee are you having? Uh, I always have my coffee with uh, steamed oat milk, and it's fair trade coffee, but I'm not sure from what country, sorry. <laughs> It's fair trade, that's good to know. Yeah. Uh, Helen, I want to talk with you today about the project you're working on about finance pathways and nature-based solutions. Could you please tell me what is it about? Yeah, so this project is part of the broader Naturevation project on mainstreaming urban nature-based solutions. And my specific project is about how to uh, obtain finance for realizing more uh, nature in cities. It sounds very interesting. And how does the project work? Yeah, so uh, we actually did a, a, a unique, very large empirical study in Europe uh, across six different countries uh, and at the EU level. Um, it took up to two years uh, and we uh, gathered data from interviews, from going to conferences, uh, from uh, observing organizations, from going through documents. And we analyzed both at a country level, but also across all the different countries, uh, what we saw as the main conditions and challenges to financing uh, urban nature-based solutions. Um, and, uh, but not only the challenges, also we looked at uh, what are the strategies, the promising strategies that we see, the pathways that we, that we see to, um, to financing urban nature-based solution to get much more urban nature in cities. I see. And why do you think it was so important to develop some, so a project like this? What do you think is the, the relevance of your project? So I think this project is um, very timely and important um, because of the several urban sustainability challenges that cities are facing at the moment, both in Europe and uh, across the world. Um, many cities are getting denser, so more people are moving to cities. And at the same time, uh, to keep them livable, uh, they also need to adapt to climate change. So uh, we're, getting, uh, we're seeing more extreme weather, uh, more heat, uh, more flooding. Uh, and somehow we need to try to keep these cities very livable uh, for the coming century. And we think uh, or we know that urban nature delivers many different benefits. Uh, at the same time, simultaneously, that can address many of these different uh, urban sustainability challenges. So it can cool the city, uh, it can help absorb water, uh, but it also can keep the city uh, relaxing and nice to live in when there's a lot of people, for example. How nice to work on that. And uh, tell us something about your project findings and uh, your personal experience working with it. So uh, I guess one of the key findings that comes out when you try to finance urban nature-based solutions is that um, the, a big challenge is that there's no direct cash flow coming from it. So when people invest in urban nature, they, they don't always know what they get out of it. And partly uh, that's because they don't know, um, they lack kind of the evidence of, you know, how is urban nature helping me reach my goal? Uh, this evidence is also very dependent on the context. Um, and secondly, uh, it's hard to put it into kind of monetary terms. Um, and finally, another challenge is that many of these benefits, they, um, uh, they, they're scattered. So uh, there are different actors who receive different benefits. So for a single actor, it's, it's difficult to pay for urban nature all by themselves. So the costs are often higher than the benefit that someone receives. And that's is also probably one of the most promising strategies that we found in the, in the research is that if different actors are able to pay for, uh, pay a little bit, uh, a part of the bill for realizing urban nature and they're able to pool this, uh, this investment, it's actually much easier to upscale uh, urban nature because 
everyone still reaps all the benefits, but they only pay for part of the costs. And we've seen some really nice examples coming out of the project. For example, an insurance firm in the Netherlands that uh, helps to bring down the cost for green roofs because for them, it uh, provides, uh, they expect it to lower damage costs on roofs. Um, and we see water boards uh, that, uh, give, uh, that give subsidies for green roofs as well. Uh, so this way you can kind of, everyone picks up a little bit of the bill, it becomes easier to finance uh, urban nature. Um, and that's also relates then to my personal experience. So on a final note, I also have a green roof now. And, uh, um, I also kind of got the funding together from many different sources. So, um, yeah, I tried it out myself as well. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting and very inspiring. Maybe I, I can get one too. It sounds very difficult, but uh, it sounds uh, really, really nice. So thank you so much, Helen, for all those insights. It was a pleasure for me to have you here in a coffee break and wish you all the best to you and your roof. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you so see much. See you again bye -bye. soon. Uh, bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this project, you can find the link here below. See you next time. Bye bye.